Amen. Good morning, everyone. Are we all blessed this morning? Amen. Come and say, thank you, Lord. This is the day that you have made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. So you gotta, you got to hear yourself speak the word. That's important. Jesus said, if you're saying to this moment, too many people want to talk about their moans. He said to speak to your mountain. we got to quit telling uh, God how big our mountain is. Start telling our mountain how big our God is. Right. right? Stand up. Go straight. This morning, I had the privilege of speaking out a message that God placed in my heart almost 40 years ago. And when he placed it there, I saw it. And it became alive to me. And I've changed up through the years and may have blessed you and encouraged you like it has me and still is encouraging me. The name of the message is Christ in you. Christ is in you for a reason. Who would like to know why? We can think of a lot of reasons, a lot of good valid reasons. And then there's God's reason. Why you're alive in this generation. If you're breathing at this time in this generation, that means God has something for you in this generation to be used. Right? The water thrown into the head of the stream with the salt, so to speak, and a new cruise so the salt can heal the waters. Christ in you. Let's go to John. This will be part one of two parts. We'll finish it next week, God willing. John 13, starting with 34. Oh, this is exciting. This is one of the most exciting messages that God ever sort of placed in my heart that got me solid all the years and knowing who I am with Him. Getting myself. See, number one, you got to know a couple things. There is a God, and you're not Him. Get those two straight. Some people don't get those straight. They say they believe in God, but then they play God. John 13, 34. A new commandment I give you. Can I get stuck there? A new. A new. Jesus Christ has the right, divine right, to give a new commandment. He's just giving you one right here. If you follow this commandment right here, you can add it to the ten. You can add it to the three he gave you later. You can two that he gave you later. You can just add it. This is a new commandment. I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. What would I do? I'd find out how he loves us. I'd study that. How he loves us. If you study how he loves us, then you know how to love others. If not, we just love them with a love that's built into us since we've been born. And love has a lot of meanings. You got eros, sexual love. You know, you got uh, Philadelphia, phileo. Love that's based on condition. You love me, I love you. You look good, I love you. You don't look good anymore, I don't love you. Based on condition. And you have agape, the God kind of love that prizes you above every other thing. Not because you've done anything, not because of how you look, because of your valuable, period. There's a lot of different kind of loves, and we can talk about them. But we talk about Christ in you. That love, one another. That means you got to forgive people. That is telling you how to be free. How to love one another. Verse 35. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is how you know you're born of God when you start loving on each other. Anybody can complain, have an attitude, get in your face, right? Being in a bad mood, all that, being baptized in pickle juice is easy. Doing what's right, walking what's right is key. Verse 36, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus answered, said, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterward. And Peter said, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. And Jesus answered, said, will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me three times. The rooster didn't crow three times. Okay. It says, after you deny me three times, the rooster's going to crow. Now, between John 13 and the end of the chapter and the beginning of John 14, the thought process keeps going on. It didn't end there. You know, Jesus didn't leave Peter hanging. The thought keeps going. So, verse 38. Uh, Jesus said, I will lay down like my sake. Most surely I say to you, the rooster will not crow. Do you deny me three times? John 14, then picking it up at verse 1. He says, but let not your heart be troubled. Why? You're about to deny me. 
Have you ever denied Him? In your own way? A lot of ways to deny Him. I ain't got that figured out, but I do read what this is saying. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, you hear that? No one. This is what makes Christianity and the Bible and Jesus' his real name, Yahushua, what makes him exclusive is this line right here that no one will be allowed into heaven without faith in Christ. I didn't make that rule. That's in the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E, the basic instruction before leaving earth. The Bible. We gotta hide it in our heart. Right? Hide it. And you can see it. The Bible wasn't meant to be carried, it was meant to carry you. It was meant to get into your lifestyle. It was meant to get into your brain and into your health. It was meant to carry you further than you could ever carry ever yourself. Or education. Education will puff you right up. You gotta have a heart also, right? Moving forward. Heart of education is the education of the heart. He says in my father's house, verse 2. If it was not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. I'm going to prepare a place. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Now listen to this. Tom said, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? That's what Jesus said as I reiterate. He is the way, the truth, and the light. He says, no one. There it is. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. The cross. you got to cross Christ to get to the Father. Okay? And that's, that's what the whole gospel is about. That's the good news. That's where you go in all the world. God. God. You know, two-thirds of God's name is go. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Love people. Don't be worried about all the hang up on different teachings and all different kind of things people get hung up on. Find out what the Word of God says. Get in it and settle into the Word. You'll find it takes some time. It says here on the way, verse 6 again, Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if you have known me, you have also known my Father. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it will satisfy us. And Jesus said to him, Have I been so long with you, yet you have not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how do you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father, Yahuwah, the Father who dwells in me, does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly I say unto you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works will do. I like that, because I'm going unto my Father. He says, I'm leaving, you're taking my place. Verse 9 talks about he that has seen me. Say that with me. He that has seen me has seen the Father. Say it louder. He that has seen me, he that has seen who? He that has seen who? I always get the both. You know, Jesus. Oh, they go, oh, no, Jesus. The revelation of this teaching is he that has seen you has seen the Father. That's the revelation. That's what Jesus is trying. That's the mystery. That's what he's conveying. You are not God. There is no small G people. I don't believe in that kind of teaching out there. Where, you know, everyone's, lived, everyone's a God and no. I believe that he does. You say, well, could you prove that? I'm glad you asked, because we're going to do that right now. He that has seen me has seen the Father. So let's qualify this statement, right? Now, I'm a Bible teacher, too, so I'm going to break something down a little bit. We're not God. Colossians 1.27, it says, To them God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery amongst the Gentiles. When Gentiles mean people without God, men without God. The mystery was made known 
unto the heathens. Right? Before that, it was not allowed. That's what the Apostle Paul, when he was preaching, right? To the Romans. We can go on. So which is Christ in you, the mystery of the, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. So what's Christ doing inside of you? You can say who you are. He loves you. But it's Christ in you. So get to love yourself, right? Because well, he loves you. So the image, the character, the attributes, the works, it's all about that. So this is it. You find out who he is. You find out what he has. And you find out what he can do. Once you find out who you are, excuse me, who he is, you find out who you are. That's where a lot of people have stopped. They don't know who he is. They take Bible and prayer and all that stuff out of the schools, the educational system. How can I get to know him as he's meant to be known? Picking him out between Santa Claus and uh, Jesus on Christmas, who's who? And Easter Bunny and Jesus on uh, Yeshua on, on Esther and Easter. And people are, who do you choose from? What's real? What's real? The word is real. That's why we're given the Antichrist. The word anti means in the place of. Means against, but in the place of. So you're gonna watch those things that the world has placed in front of Christ, in front of the gospel. To block it out. You find out who he is, what he has, and what he can do, then you find out who you are, what you have, and what you can do. There's your identification. The young people today, and I've traveled around, man, I've seen they don't a lot of them don't have an identification. They don't know who they are in Christ. They've never stepped over and found that place, right? They're just good kids and good people trying to find their life, trying to hone out their life, walking down the satanic sewers, flowing down the highways and byways, and they can't seem to get above. They can't seem to keep afloat. What in the world is bringing people down? They don't know who they are in Christ. That's the key, most fundamental belief and strength that we must have fortified within us. We must have our weapons. They must be fortified before war. We cannot be in war trying to figure out how to use the Word of God. We've got to be equipped. And to do that, you've got to know who you are in Christ. Because if you find out who you are, you find out who He is. That was my, that's what changed me, you see. Right? Yeah, we're all stuck on who we are. The gossip columns, stuck on who they are. All the people on Facebook talking about who you are, who they are, what they did, what they said. Everyone's stuck in their own cells. The Bible makes it very clear. Keep your eye on, on Christ. See, until your revelation becomes greater than your environment, you will always live a life of containment and limitation. Right? You got to have your revelation. I don't care where you're living or how you're living or what you're into, whether you're high income, low income, no income. If you're sick, which is not good. If you're broke, which is not good. If you're stupid, which is not good. If you mix them all, broke, sick, and stupid. I'm really feeling sorry for you, right? <laughs> that we need some prayer for all of us. But the fact of the matter was, uh, until you get a revelation of who you can be in Christ, until you begin to focus on the greatness and the love of God, and that He has a plan for your life. He does. I know we want to do it ourselves, but He has a plan. Okay, uh, I'm just saying, until we get a revelation... Believe God, be content where we are until he takes us to that next place. Don't get off your slow horse till you get the fast one. Be patient and move forward. For God to change your life, he must change your revelation. For many people, their inheritance in Christ is something to get. But your inheritance is something you become. It's not just something you get to just spend. It's beautiful, really. How else do you say it? God is always preparing us for what He has prepared for us. God is always preparing us for what He's prepared for us. Okay? God is always preparing us for what He's prepared for us. You put your trust in God, He'll man your life. Put Him at the helm. Jesus is my co-pilot. Really? You better change seats. Because <laughs> He may be your pilot, not your co-pilot. Right? Is He president or is He just resident? Right? Do you applaud the word or do you apply the word? Is God raising an army and an audience? What is he? Which one is it? I tell you, we are in the last days. He will pour about his spirit upon all flesh. 
And I tell you, the Spirit of God will move in an unprecedented way. There is revival that's upon us right now by the Spirit of God. There are people who they would thought they would never be saved, will be saved. There will be people who will backslide, who thought they would never backslide, and then come back. I'm telling you folks, we are right now in a wave of the Holy Ghost. You just got to get in. You got to just know who you are and get it right. Let's find out. People say, what would Jesus do? <laughs> What would Jesus do? Jesus was here. Jesus would stick to his father's word. Period. That's what he would do. Well, what kind of loving God sends people to hell? God doesn't send anybody to hell. He honors their choice. The Bible says he created hell for the devil and his angels. And it ends up people don't believe in him. Right? Hell's down. Heaven's up. Still pretty straight, isn't it? When you know this, you gotta understand things too, right? Terminology is important. I, I bumped into a guy, he, he was talking to me about how he still believes. And I said, you know, he, he's buying a slave thing. I said, hold you, son. He says he's 19. And you're all ticked off because of the slave thing. How many years ago was that? How many decades ago? I said, have you ever been a slave? No. Have you ever had a slave master? No. What are you hanging on to, man? What are y'all torqued off about? Well, my great, 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 my great, great, and then my great, great, yeah, that's great. All the great, greats were under all sorts of things. And there wasn't just white, black masters. There were black, black masters. There were masters of all sorts running these plantations back then, doing evil things and wrong things. We all can agree on that. But when you come right down to it, you've got to make a decision about what is true and get your terminology right. We cannot use what happened years ago as an excuse not to be what God has called you to be today. I have this funny story story uh, about how truth does make a difference, getting it right. A Chinese man and a Jewish man were eating together, and suddenly, without warning, the Jew gets up, walks over to the Chinese fellow, punches him in the mouth, bang, and sending him sprawling. The Chinese man picks himself up, rubs his jaw, and asks, what in the world did you do that for? And the answer comes back, for Pearl Harbor. His response in total astonishment Pearl Harbor? I didn't have anything to do with Pearl Harbor. It was the Japanese that bombed Pearl Harbor. The Jew responds, Chinese, Japanese, Taiwanese, they're all the same to me. Well, they're both sitting down again. Before long, the Chinese man gets up, walks over to the Jew, and sends him flying with a slap and punch to the jaw, right to the ground. The Jew yells out, why did you do that? And the answer comes back, because of the Titanic. This is the Titanic. Why? I didn't have anything to do with the Titanic. Where well, the Chinese man replies, Goldberg, Feinberg, Iceberg, they're all the same to me. <laughs> Get the terminology right. It's so important that we operate in the truth of God's word. Galatians 2.20. The Apostle Paul says, I have, he told the Galatian church, I have crucified the Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. There's no longer... What is he doing in you? Hanging out? What, are you using a little Barbie house until it's ready? What is he doing inside of us? He's inside of us. What is he doing? Where are you? Where are you? Hey! He's doing something. He wants to do... He's got a plan, you see. Yeah. See, someone has to transport God. It might as well be you. Well, that makes me nervous. Shouldn't make you nervous. Christ in you. What's he doing inside of you? Why is he? I don't want to talk about that. Then how in the world will you ever be victorious in Christ? You got to know who you are in Christ before. Oh no, I can just shoot from the hip. No, you can't. Not on this. You can't. It's not like making pancakes. Okay. Why would Jesus say, "He that has seen me hath seen the Father"? What gave Jesus that biblical right, that divine right? Like he's Yahusha, right? He, he can say that. Well, number one, he can say that because he is the Son of God. Now I've got to ask you a question. Are you less a son than he is? What is Galatians 4, 7? It says, therefore you are no longer a slave. Yeah, there's that. Answers that right there. But a son. And if a son... Then an heir of God through Christ. And if a son, a son. Now if you're a son, you need to come to the conclusion that you are just as much a son as Jesus Christ in you. 
There's something that God wants to use you to do. And Christ, because, see, God drops and judges everything in the backdrop of eternity, you know. He does not live by our time schedule, our minutes and seconds, and barbarian Babylonian calendar that's set up for us that we live by. I tell you, it all comes down to what God has to say. You can't get yourself out of this world. We got to do our best and move through this world. And then and, and, and God will help us. First of all, you got to know who you are. I'm no longer. See, Jesus came as a man. This is what gets people. He did not come as God with all power. When He came to earth, let me give you some examples. Number one, you don't have to turn there, but Luke 2.40, Jesus was filled with wisdom. Yet in Luke 2.52, 12 verses later, it says he increased in wisdom. We've got to show you a perfect example. If he came down with all his power, with all his divinity, how could he be the perfect example to sinful people? He had to be tempted with sin and then know how to say no by his own choice. Important to remember that. He came as a man without his rightful power and divinity that he once had. Let's go to Philippians 2. I'm going to read this out. New King James Version. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. I taught a lot of Bible colleges through the years. When I get this scripture right here, it sort of keeps everybody quiet. Then it sort of says, oh yeah. Verse 9. Philippians 2. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name that at that name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth. Yeah, yeah, he got up and he got down again. Under the earth. How many want to be under the earth? No. I don't want to be in that. Yeah, come in. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. How many tongues? Like it or not, they're going to confess it. Whether they believe it or not, at the end of the time, they will say, you're the man. When the spotlight hits, you better be dancing. So, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God and the Father. So, just a couple things to let you know that he can say he's the Son of God, but you're also a Son of God. What made Jesus the Son of Man, but yet the Son of God? Right? He was filled with wisdom. He came as a man. He left his rightful divinity in heaven. We just read it. And number C. He was tempted without sin. Jesus was tempted. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. He was tempted, yet without sin. Now, if he had God, and he was God with all power and dominion as he walked the earth as a man, sin would not have been a temptation to him. He had to be tempted so he could say no. Or how could he say he was tempted just like we were? How could he take what we fight against unless he takes it, fights it, and beats it himself into the ground and gets the depth of all of it, the keys, depth, and the grave. He pulls it back for each and every person who would believe. I'm going with that one. Right? You say, how do you know that? Well, James 1, 13, 14, Jesus' stepbrother says it right here. You see, when tempted, no one's to say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil. There it is. But Jesus was tempted. Okay. But he said no. So we could say yes to all the things that are trying to kill us and bombard us. You cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Hear that. God doesn't tempt you with evil. Well, God, God doesn't tempt you with evil. You can believe your circumstance. You can believe religious people, or you can believe the Bible. What are you going to believe? I'm going to believe what the Bible has to say. Because if I don't, I'm in trouble. And the snare of uh, the fear of man brings a snare. I don't want that. Nor does he tempt anyone, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Who's lust? His own lust and enticed. Okay, I just want to show you that. Jesus was tempted. So, if Jesus was God with all power and divinity, how could sin be a temptation to him? And if he was all power and perfect, then how in the world could he be an example to an imperfect, sinful man? 
Jesus came to earth not to show a perfect man of God, but God in man. The difference. Christ in you. If Jesus was God will all power, then are we greater than God? Because in John 14, 12, he says, greater works will you do than I did. No, he's not saying that. And if Jesus came to earth as God with all power and divinity, why did God have to anoint him with the Holy Ghost and power? Acts 10, 38. Or if Jesus was ministered as God manifested in the flesh, why would God need to be anointed? And if that's the case, who would do that anointing? No one. We're more anointed than God. I'm just saying. The fact that God anointed Jesus lets us know that He was tested and He went through a trial and He was proven. You've got to study that. That's important. How you know that kind of power. Jesus, the Son of Man and the Son of God knew the divine order. Jesus said in John 14, 28, My Father is greater than me. You hear that? My Father is greater than me. There's things that are greater. There are a chain of commands in 1 Corinthians 11.3. I read this once. One woman got, she got up and walked out. I said, we all mad at her ex-husband. Why? Yeah, maybe he was a pig. Yeah, all men are morons unless they get into Christ. you got to get the Word of God inside of you or you just, there's really not a lot of hope for anybody on the earth, really. We're just sort of walking. We're just like a warm piece of walking through a, a warm piece of meat walking Slow suicide, really. I mean, the only thing that gives us, to me, what gives us value is our place in Christ. That's where our value is in Christ. You see, not in what we have, not what we own, but in Christ. And I have to think right here. When I get down here and I read this scripture in 1 Corinthians 11, 3, I read this lady, get out and walk out. I asked her, I said, you know something? You have unforgiveness. You have to let that go. You have any idea what he did for me? I don't know what he did to you, for you, from you, took me, but I tell you what Jesus did for you. Whatever Jesus did is greater than that pain. You better switch that quickly, or you're going to be carrying this guy around with you the whole rest of your stinking life. Or girl. Goes both ways, right? As I'm just saying. He says, But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of every woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. He's showing basically how it's connected to authority. Moving on. In life. And I say, that's why I mean, when people get married, you got to find people that love the Lord. Right? Love the Lord. You know, what happens, you, you, you go to bed with Satan's daughter, you wake up in hell. I mean, I'm just saying. Or vice versa, it's no good. you got to make that decision. I know it's a tough decision sometimes, but when you see them, when you know who you are in Christ, when you know that, things change. That you don't have to know who you are on the internet. You don't have to know who you are through other people's eyes. You don't have to know who you are through your own insecurity. And you sure don't have to know who you are through your past. Your failures are not your finish line. The light in that tunnel is not a train. Showing you the way out. If God is in your life, the Word is in your life, your future and your now is as bright as the promises of God. Keep pressing forward. So Jesus said he's the Son of God, but we're a Son of God too. And the reason why we can say a Son of God is uh, because of what he said. And I'll take that. Let's go here. He's in the Father and the Father is in him. That's how we can say he's the Son of God. But John 14, 10, do you believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? But let live in us. Look at John 14, 19. It says, a little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. Proper translation, because I am life, you will live. That's connection in family when you belong to him. This is not praying or saying our father and living like an orphan. This is being the real deal and doing your best to live the word and return when you have to and move forward and watch your mouth and do what's good and let go of all that stuff that's tormenting us. Let go of your past, man. Let it go! If you do not let go, it will hang on to you, man. You'll always, you can't communicate with people because we're always trying to communicate to all our baggage. 
But would you trust God as we grow in the Word of God? I have seen people with a past you thought could never have a past, never have a future. Their past was so bad. I've seen God deliver people. I've seen God lift people up. I've seen God set people free just like you have. And those days are not ended. We are on the brink of the greatest revival this world has ever seen where the Spirit of God and the breath of God will move through this valley, will move through the delta, will move through this land. I'm telling you, there he is that the Spirit of the Lord is saying that we keep our eye upon him. There is no good thing that he will withhold from those who walk uprightly. Hallelujah. I just get all excited about that. He was in the Father and the Father's in him. That's how we could say that. John 14, 19, a little while. At verse 20, at that day you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. And he who has my commandments and keeps them, he says, I give you a new commandment. But he who has my commandment and keeps them, not talk about them, but he who my commandments and keeps them, not refers to them, keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved to my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself, the word manifest to appear, to make clear, manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? I like that. And Jesus answered, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Now how in the world can you keep the word of God if they don't teach it to you anymore? How can, they, how can you keep the word of God when they keep it from you? He who keeps my word and my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. How many say yes for me? Yes. I'll take that. Yes. Oh. So, I like that first one. Why do we say we're a son of God? Because Jesus is the son of God. And because of that, we're a son of God as well. No longer servant, but a son. He can say that because he's in the Father and the Father's in him. I like that. Ooh, let's see here. Oh, I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish it. I'm just about done. This is a study. This is this is a 10-hour teaching. You know, but if you, if you get the tape or the video, you, you study these things. If you're taking notes, you study these things. No one is victorious on Sundays alone. No one is victorious on Sundays and Thursdays alone. No one is victorious not eating the right food. You know, we can't eat our physical bodies three, four, five hot meals a day. And our spiritual uh, heart and soul, a cold snack, we need to be in the Word. So that's what trains us. That's what speaks to us. You get in the Word, it starts to speak to you. Right? And this is number three. The words that Jesus spoke. What makes Him the Son of God? What can we use also as being the Son of God? The word Son means builder of the family name. Alright. So the words Jesus spoke were not His words, but the Father's. John 14, 24. It says, He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. There it is. John 17, 8. This is the word. It's still going forward. You're hearing it. He said, For I have given to them the words which you have given to me, and they have received them, and they have known surely that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. See, see, I'm trying to show you the example. The words he was giving was the Father's words. Right? He's the Son of God. And he's got to be thinking about it. Keep moving forward on it, right? Well, when I start reading these things, you've got to start seeing how God sees you. John 12, 49. It says, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who gave me could command that I should say and what I should speak. And I know that His command is everlasting life. Therefore I speak just as the Father has told me, so I speak. He's the Son of God because the words that He spoke were God's words. He was an example. What's the Father doing? What's the Father saying? Even the Holy Spirit operated on earth through the divine order of heaven. Heaven has a divine order. John 16, 13, out of the Amplified, is the louder version. It says, but when He, the Spirit of truth, the truth-giving Spirit, 
comes, he will guide you into all truth, the whole full truth, for he will not speak of his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father, and he will give the message that he has given to him. And he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. God take some of that, right? So, by the works that he done. By the words. What about our words, folks? Our words should be his words. We're trying to make an example. He's the Son of God, proved it by his words. What about us? Okay. John 14, 23, Jesus said, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. You hear that? You've got to keep his word. I encourage people, come to church, bring a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, we'll get you a Bible. Get in there. Study it. It's your new best friend. It's life and liberty. Mm -mm -mm. John 15, 7, here it is. This is the if you. <laughs> If you abide me, and my words abide in you, ask what you will that shall be done to you. For by this, my Father is glorified that you bear much karpos, fruit. You bear much fruit. Yeah, you shall ask what you will that shall be done to you. Go to verse 8 as well. I quoted it in my head. Here's the Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so you'll be my disciples. Bear fruit, you'll be disciples. John 15, 15. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I call you friends. For all things I've heard from my Father, I have made known unto you. I know it's a lot of words this morning, but bear with me. I know we can watch three-hour movies, we can go to four-hour football games, and we can watch all sorts of stuff. But I always encourage people, can you really get too much word? Well, the body can only take in a half hour. Your spirit, man, don't limit the spirit of God inside of you. I've never built the largest drum sets in the world. With billions of people looking at them, if I thought for one minute I was smart enough to do it, I had to have God lead me and God show me. Right? God will show us how to do these things, whatever He wants us to do. Don't back up, right? So our words should be His words. That's what makes the Son of God. And number four, Jesus' works were not His works, but the Father's works. Right? John 14, 10. Do you not believe that I am in the Father? And the Father in me, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak in my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me, he does the works. John 14, 10. You got to see that. Next. Yeah. The Father in me, he does the, who does the works? Don't take credit for it. Don't think that you're doing it all. He does it. He will use you. So get the limit off yourself. Be encouraged. Quit thinking I'm such a failure. I can't do this or I'll never be this or I'll never be good enough. That's the lie. It's a lie. Don't listen to those things. God will place you right. His in hammock of love and swing you right into His purpose. Don't you worry. But you got to be coming after Him, pressing after Him. So, where am I? John uh, 14.10 John 5.19 Listen to this one, folks. You want a perfect example of Christ? Jesus answered and said, Most surely I say to you, the Son can do nothing of Himself. The Son can do nothing of Himself. But what He sees the Father do. He's always looking at the Father. And Jesus says, follow me as I follow him. Keep your eye on me. And says, whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. That's our example. Christ in you. You forgive people. You let it go. Let it go. Because it keeps you in bondage. Let it go. Forgiveness is a freedom. It's a righteous treat that God has given you. Let it go. So if Jesus has these works that proves he's the Son of God, what about our works that prove we're also a Son of God? Working for him, under him, in him, so to speak. Uh, John, John 14, 12. I say, if you believe in me, the works that he will do also, the greater works he will do. Because he's leaving. Greater. You're all going to get out there in mass and get all this stuff done. The greater works, folks. Going all the world and preaching the gospel. Going all the world. The word world there in the Greek is the word cosmos. 
And the, the word cosmos can mean a lot of different things. When you boil it down to contextual, what it's really saying, go into the seat of their enjoyment and give them the word of God. Go in all the world. Right? When you're with them, go in and love on them. Share the gospel with them. Hmm. Listen, if you've ever been in the business, a lot of baby boomers are dying now. A lot of baby boomers are up there, right? We're in our 60s now, so people have been around a while who didn't have cell phones, did not have all sorts of computers, who did not have all sorts of things. As we're getting older now, we're finding, we're finding out that leaving your job after 30 and 40 years, you just can't put a snot nose in out of school. To have, if say you're a vice president, and now you've been there for 35 years, you can, you can become the president one day, but God called you to the mission field. Now that vice president of that country, must of that company, must be replaced. And they're good friends. They've known each other for decades. Who is he going to replace that man with? He's going to look for a man with experience, a man who has wisdom, a man who has similar to the same level of expertise in that job. Right? He cannot give them that responsibility without that man or woman first having that ability. He's not going to put that on you. So I just let you know that. In other words, if, if you're there and Jesus plays here, if he says greater works than you do, and he's going to give you everything you need to get your job done for him. Right? He's going to give it to you. Let's go to John 17, 18. We come to a close. It says here, And as you sent me into the world, I have also sent them. There it is. As you sent me into the world, even though I have also sent them into the world. I would read that like 500 times. And then I'd write it. And then I'd memorize it. Now, you can write it on your forehead. Call it the mark of the feast. But I'm telling you, when you start getting into that right there, when you start believing that, he sent you for the same reason God sent him. Is that he took all that stuff away in the sin. Now you got power over all the power of the enemy. Ah, I like this. It says, as you sent me into the world, I've also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they may also be sanctified by the truth. Who are them? I do not pray for these alone, but for all those who will also believe in me through their word that they also may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in you and us, that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me, I have given to them, that they may be one just as we are one. God would not have done that. God would not show you what you cannot possess. If it's there, he'll let you have it. First John 4. Verse 6, 4 through 6. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. There it is. I didn't write it. And the truth is not in him. We're not talking about mistakes. We're not talking about things you can stand up and fix. We're talking about living a practicing a lifestyle that does not please God. Right? I didn't, it says, but whoever keeps his word... Tune in the love of God is perfected in him. You see, the love will be perfected in you if you keep his word. I have a hard time loving people. Keep his word, and he'll show that love will perfect in you. It will mature, right? By this we know that we are in him. And he who says he abides in him ought also himself to walk just as he walked. Do you hear that? Walk just as he walked. So the walk as you walk means to tread around, right? To tread around. You have authority. You can make some sound. You can tread, right? Your fingers are battle, your hands for war. Make music. Go through life making a little music, right? Be happy. Happiness is like a music. It's joyful unto those in your hand. That I have a hundred things I shouldn't be happy about. I do too. What you're going to choose? Cheer is a choice. Right? Fruit is a choice. Be happy. Be happy. Ha! No. Okay. Because as he is. Do you hear that? Because as he is. 
let's get right to that. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. 1 John 4.4 4. Why is he greater in you? What's he doing inside of you if, you're, if he's greater in you? What's, he, what's, it, what's going on? The great lizard? Okay, if greater, there must be a whole bunch of stuff going on that he's got to be greater over. Greater is he that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, right? Greater is he. What are you gonna do? Oh wow. Yeah. Start acknowledging Christ in you. Uh, Philemon's one six, let the communication of your faith become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that's in you in Christ Jesus. Acknowledging. Oh, I become one of those radicals. There is no shortcut. If you're going to love Jesus, you're going to be considered a radical. If you're going to preach His word, you're going to be considered a radical. The tallest tree catches the most wind. Preach the word. This is it. First John 4, 16 through 17. We're landing it. And we have known and believed the love of God has for us. And he who abides in love abides in God. And God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this. Here comes, folks that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as He is, so are we in this world. As He is, so are we in this world. He that has seen you has seen the Father. One, Jesus is the Son of God. Well, so are you. You're under His auspices, working on His behalf. Number two, He was in the Father and the Father's in Him. Well, they live in you. They live in us to do the Father's bidding. Number three, the words that Jesus spoke were not His words, but the Father. He called Himself the Son of God. Well, it should be the same with our words. Things that identify us as Christians. And Antioch, they knew. They could tell who was Christians just by watching their life. Just by watching them. Right? You may be the only Bible someone reads. Yeah, we mess up and we do things and sometimes people are looking for those mistakes for they don't, so they'll have an excuse not to serve God. But I tell you, you just keep getting better and better. Number three, the words that Jesus spoke were not His words, but the Father's. Same for us as the Son of God. His words should be our words. And last but not least, the works that Jesus did were not His Father's. It should be the same with our works. Our works are His works. Amen? We listen to Him. Christ in you, the hope of glory. How many cats in that? It's important that you, that you eat it and you sleep it. I don't know where you are right now. A lot of different people, but in a few moments you're going to have an opportunity to respond to Christ. i tell you a story about a man in college going to be an Olympic diver. I like the story about this man who would go and practice every day his dives and the high dive. He's a high diver. And a Christian friend. They were friends. They were a motley bunch because he would preach to them all the time and he just was not interested. You know, he's just doing this thing. Getting through school. But he was always laying seeds. Whatever. Not interested. He got one day. The moonlight was shining through the top of the glass stairs. So everything looked pretty good. So he climbed up all the way to the very top. Right? He got on the back of the board like he normally would do. The sunlight, he thought, well, I don't need any lights because the sunlight I can see in. So it looks good. So he got on the end of the board. And as he got on that end of the board, he got there. He's getting ready to do his, his triples and everything he does. And as he's going up, the sun, excuse me, the moon threw a shadow against his body and he could see a cross on the wall when he's getting ready to jump. He got under so much conviction that he fell to his face, right? Fell down to his face and repented and accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior just before he left that board. As he could up with a tear, stood up with a tear in his eye, a maintenance man came in, flipped down the lights to all the pool area, and he looked down, and the pool had been drained for repairs. I tell you folks, many people are sitting just on the edge of life.
getting ready to take a step, getting ready to jump in an unknown that I tell you that will destroy their life or could kill their life. But I'm telling you, you put your faith in Jesus Christ and you repent of your sin and you ask Him in your life as Lord and Savior. Not only will He change your life, not only will He put you on the right path, not only will He make every cricket path straight, but He will bring you into a family that there is unprecedented. He will make you part of the glory of God. The Bible says, as the glory came upon her, and Jesus walked this earth, Jesus said, the glory that I have, uh, you have given me, I have given them. I say, I'll take every bit of that, amen? Not that I understand it, but I'll take it, and I might as well burn for him, because there's nothing else worth burning for upon the face of the earth. So I'm telling you, you want something that's worth living for? You want something to lay your life down on? You want something to know for a fact? I said, in your heart right now, in your life, is there something that needs to be forgiven this very moment? You say, yeah, well, then you need to make Christ the Lord of your life. Maybe you're backslidden. If there was a time you prayed more earnestly, testified more zealously, gave more liberally, sought God more diligently, witnessed more fervently than you do right now, then you have backslid that much. But I encourage you to step to the cross because at the cross we're all the same level. You can give the devil a black eye. Boom! You can give him a black eye and you can say today is a day of salvation. Today I'm going to change my life because I'm going to let God do it. Today I'm going to stand up and say, you know, Lord, help me. I like that. The Bible says God so loved the world. He loves you. He loves you. I think God's mad at me. If God was mad at you, he'd make you puree on a carpet. He's <laughs> not mad at you. He loves you. He says, while we were yet sinners, he sent his only begotten son. My, my, my. Right now, I'll put it before anyone here. Everyone close their eyes. You go to the net right now around the world, I'm speaking to you too. Repent of your sin. You want a new change? You want a new stern? I don't care what you believe you're growing up. Number one, what your mom and dad believed, we're not talking about. Number two, we're not talking about where you've been or what kind of sin or how far you've fallen. Right? This is a decision that we make to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. When I hit three, when I hit three, you say, yes, include me in this prayer, Pastor. I want my life right. Praise God for mom and dad, but it's not going to get you saved just because you knew them. And you've got to make a decision for yourself. There's something in your life that needs to be forgiven. Today's the day. Let it go. Are you ready? And I hit three. Put your hand up. We're going to pray. Ready? Three. Put the hand up. Is there anyone here? God bless you. Stand to your feet. Stand straight up. You put your hand up. Stand straight up. I'm asking a question. God's listening to the answer. You put your hand up. Stand straight up. The Bible says if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father. That is in heaven. And if you got something going on in your heart, stand right up. I always tell people, get up, man. Let God acknowledge him so he can acknowledge you. That's a scripture. Ah, and he loves us. He loves you. Come on, let's pray all this together. Those who are on the net out there too, let's pray this. Ready? He's listening. He loves you. Say it out loud. Right? Say it out loud. Say, Lord, Lord. those here and those on the net, say, Lord, Lord. Forgive me of my sin. Me of my sin. Change, me. Change me. Be my Lord. Be my, Lord. Be my, Savior. Be my Savior. Help me, Help me. To, find to find your perfect will for my life. This is a new time in my life. I will not live by tomorrow. I put my faith in today. In your today. Jesus, you're my Savior. Today is the day of salvation. Thank you for it. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come here, Corey. I'm God. Hallelujah. I hear God something for you, buddy. I hear the Spirit of God say He's got something for you, man. You're, 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 you're a no accident. You, I heard the Spirit of God saying to you, will I not complete what I did to you as a little kid? I heard the Spirit of God saying something happened when you were a little kid. 
something that God, something happened. I don't know if it was an angel or something. You were just a little, little tight. But I hear the Spirit of God say, has there not been an attack on your life? Has there not been an attack on your mind? But I hear the Spirit of God say, will I not this day break that assignment over you that you would have my assignment, my love, and my peace for those tormenting things that come in your mind? This day we break them now by the blood of Jesus. And we say this is an absolute new day, son. God has His hand on you to get all into that. Get all into that. Yeah. I like you, man. All of us are like this young man. Wanting more of God. Hungry for more of God. Wanting to see what God has. Join a good church. So I'm looking for that perfect church. Well, I got to tell you, when you join it, we'll no longer be perfect. So, just get into the Word and, and forgive people, and you'd be surprised how long you could stay at a church. Right? We learn. Hallelujah. God is good. Exciting. Say this with me. I have the mind of Christ, because He says so. Touch me, Lord. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name. Amen.